All right, here we go. Welcome back to another episode of Forbidden Authenticity Within. This podcast being a bit different than the other podcasts people may listen to as I don't solely focus on the content of what people share or the ideas that people have, but I focus a lot on what I feel is what I feel is de what I feel is de- what I feel is deprived of a lot of people who stutter and that's uh, and that's authentic, vulnerable communication. So first and f- first and for- first and for- first and foremost, <laughs> the uh, the goal of this podcast is not to give all the best ideas and share all the, the the tips and tricks. The first and foremost goal of this is just to represent what communication can look like being people who stutter and showing that there's there's absolutely no fucking reason that we need to be held back at all from that. So with oh, we can that, curse on this show. Oh, we can fucking Hell curse yeah. on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. so, so with that little short introduction, I'm here with Danny. Um, are you hey. drinking tea? Are you drinking tea right now, Danny? Got, got some green tea. Yes, it is my favorite uh, drink in the AM. Yes, me too, man. Um, yeah. all right. And let's hop right into it. So, Danny, I I purposefully didn't really look much up about you because okay. I wanted to get to know you as you are right now, not of what I've read about you, not of what I think you are through this do do the stuff but there's a couple things that i do know about you okay there there is that you host a podcast yes i uh i'm a part of a non-profit group called elevate life i've been volunteering for them for about eight years now and it's pretty much a program that i went to when i was 16 and it's like a leadership development program for young people and Through this experience, I really, for the first time in my life, realized that my speech is not going to hold me back. And it was like that summer that my life completely changed. And so I have come back every year to film it because I'm a videographer. And since then, uh, they've asked me to host their TLT Movement podcast, the podcast for tomorrow's leaders today. I'm not a huge fan of being in front of the camera. I prefer to be behind it. But, uh, you know, I'm the one who stepped up to do it. And so I'm happy to. And, yeah, so that's – it's not really my podcast. It's more of TLTs, but I'm just the host. Nice, man. All right. So And the editor and the producer and the director and the casting agent and the social media (laughs) person. (laughs) Everything. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice, man. Well, I love that because I'm getting to know you right now along with everyone else. So like everything that I, that's coming to my mind that I'll write down is just like a genuine in a genuine interest that I have. And I, I'm excited for this conversation. So me too, the, Chase. The uh, the first thing that comes to mind, man, is uh, what what was it or what or what or what or what happened? when you were 16 years old that made you realize that stuttering is not going to hold you back? Was it like one moment type of thing or what was it? That's a good question. You know, I feel like uh, the TLT program, it, it it's such a cohesive environment for people to not feel judge, not mm. feel any judgment. And so they also encourage you to play big. And so a lot of it, it's like experiential 
learning where, you know, you, you get out what you put in. And so there was this exercise where called the uh, team contract where the entire group of like 50 kids, uh, all the mentors and facilitators explain the rules and then step back. And pretty much we had to write a team contract of, of values that we all agree with and everybody in the room has to agree. So if somebody doesn't agree, you have to like work that out. And this process takes about like six hours, which is shocking because you would think that, you know, to agree that our values are, you know, honesty, uh, boldness, all this stuff. Like, like we would come up with some good stuff and then there'd always be a couple kids that are like, oh, I don't agree with that. And so I was the one who stepped up on the, on like the center stage and was being kind of like the facilitator and kind of helping lead the group. And it was through that that I realized that I'm terrible at it. <laughs> and I was putting kids down. I was like, hey, you're you're only 13. You don't know what you're talking about. All this <laughs> stuff. Like, I was doing a terrible job. Oh, my gosh. At one point, I was even, like, uh, make, like turning the entire group on the facilitators that put on the program. I'm like, these guys don't know what they're talking about. They didn't plan enough. I was going off. <laughs> But it, it was through this that was very humbling. And I was like, you know what? I can lead. I can step up and speak up. And uh, from then on, I went back to school. And I was like, you know what? I'm never going to let my speech get in the way of me being bold ever again. And throughout high school, I just realized that that mindset made me not only popular, but also uh, just suck the the marrow out of school just like the whole experience i would come half an hour early i would leave two hours late i would join every club all the sports that that interests me and it made high school very fun not being held back by something that i have no control over mm. wow man well i feel like that experience just before high school or going into high school, there is uh, something a lot of people who who stutter don't get to feel. Because I I think the end of the end of high school and the be and the beginning of you of university is often people who stutters like hardest times. So mm. that's that's awesome, man. You got to experience that so you can not have re not have re not have re not have regrets about what you sh what you could have done as i so many people dude so many people think back of like fuck <laughs> what would high school would have been like if if i didn't hold back right like so much of that because I so, think in life, yeah. you you get in what you, or you get out what you put in. And so if yeah. you're really, if you're just, you know, the last one to show up, the first one to leave, you're, you don't talk to people, you don't, I think just in life overall, if you don't do that, you're, you're not going to have a good time. It's like, the more involved you are, I think the more fun it all is. And, uh, and yeah, man, I... I've known a couple people who huddered and you're right. High school, college, it was not, not a great time for, for me. I got that early. It was like in elementary school, middle school it was just brutal to, to the degree where I was even homeschooled. I think sixth and eighth grade. Cause I just, I felt so, I don't know, uh, like a loser or something. I don't know. Like, yeah, I, I, I moved all the time. So my parents are really uh, risk taking entrepreneurs. And so our finances have been like this my entire life. And so we would move like every two years. And so I was always the new kid at school. And uh, man, elementary school kids are brutal. And they would really make fun of my speech like a lot. And that made me be like a bookworm that just read books all day didn't talk to anybody i was like 
I was always the first to leave class and just bolt to my ne- the next, sit the front row so I didn't have to, like, interact with the kids. It was just, like, I was so academically uh, f- focused because I just, I just felt like I couldn't talk. Yeah. Man, there's a, a lot of shit that I wrote down from the first time that you spoke. Um, one of the things is you said being a being a part of did you say being a part of the TLT or being a part of um what you called it some something else at the beginning too right so elevate life educational foundation is like the parent and then TLT mm-hmm. is the summer leadership program okay so yeah. yeah being a part of that i you mentioned that it a part of this program it gets you to to think big and to and to and to and to play big and the first thing that comes to my mind with that is one thing i realized with myself is that the moment i had a goal that felt fucking huge (laughs) and i was putting all of my energy and focus into into uh into uh achieving that goal my stutter felt extremely small yeah it's it's like i feel that so many people who stutter the stutter takes up their whole life because there's nothing bigger outside of their life like the stutter is the biggest thing Mm -hmm. and i and i personally think like one of the best things that people can do is to create some type of goal or vision or per or per or per or purpose that feels a lot lar- feels a lot feels a lot lar- a lot larger than them and to prioritize going down that route and i and i feel in your mind when you stutter it's it's, it's not that it's not that much of a deal. It's not, it doesn't seem that big because it's not affecting that, that priority goal that you're after. So my, yeah, my question would be like, was that something that affected you? Is that a conscious thought that you've had in in the past of like, Oh, when I play big, my stutter seems small or is, or was that just, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, big time. I mean, on that same note it's not it's not just playing big like playing big can look a lot of different ways it can look very simple even uh you know just being involved in whatever experience that you're having in the moment but dreaming big that is so you're so right i think that not only for people that stutter for people who are depressed anxious feel however I think focusing on a goal that's so big it almost scares you, so big that you almost can't do it on your own, that's what really drives you. And I think as men especially, we are purpose-focused. And I think when we are feeling like we are making value for others or working toward our, our purpose or our big goal – all these tiny little issues that are mental that I feel like the world really hyper f- f- focuses on, all those fade away. I mean, mm. it doesn't even have to be your own, like, I'm going to have a podcast. Like, y- 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 who would? It can look like aligning yourself with somebody with a big hole and adopting it as your own. I think that that, I think you're right on that when you focus on something big, the stutter seems so minute. Dude, that's so true. Um, And I love that you expanded it to not just the stutter because what I found too is like growing up, I I don't know if you've checked my stuff out, but some some of the earlier podcasts of what I talked of what I talked uh, what I talked about is my sexual dysfunction that I had for like the first 
95% of my sexual experiences, like either I wouldn't be able to get hard or I would just bust within like 10 seconds every time. <laughs> and having no sense of purpose and then having a stutter and having that on top of it, I was like, it was a gun, it was a gunshot, a fucking yeah, shotgun to to <laughs> me. But the the moment I was like, all right, I'm gonna put my attention and focus to achieving what I feel called to achieve for this moment. That feels big. That feels scary. That feels like I'm gonna fail. But I'm gonna put 100 percent of my efforts into that i realized when i would go to talk i would be much more confident in myself i'd be yes. i'd have much more self i'd have much more self esteem when i would go to have sex i wouldn't be so much in my head of like oh i i i need to last long i need to last long because that wasn't where my val where the main source of my val the main source of my value was coming from wasn't coming from if I could last long. It wasn't coming if I could say that word, if I could say that word fluently or not. It was coming if I put, if I was proud of myself of the of the of the of the of the efforts that I put in to uh to uh, achieve my purpose. And that fueled me. That made me feel good. And that was always in my. It was always in my control. If if I put my energy into achieving my purpose. And then the result was so much um, importance and stress that was related to the speech and everything just got so tiny, man. Did you notice when you focused on that purpose that your sexual dysfunction dissipated? Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't say it, it was the only thing I needed to to learn to do there's also just like so much so much um nice guy tendencies that i had that caused this to happen i wow. feel the stutter and the sexual dysfunction is like so correlated in the sense yeah, where do, it's do, like do, do you think the yeah. sexual dysfunction was caused by the stutter or the other way around I wouldn't say either call either caused e either caused either. That's a good question though. I would say uh both of those stem from my prior my pri my prior my prioritization of trying to make someone like me over mm. me just being myself. Like uh, when, when I prioritized, I, that this person likes me over just relaxing and being myself. That's when I would stutter. That's when I would bust quick. That's when I would, that's when, that's, that's when I'd go on the dance floor and I'd be so stiff. I, and I right. couldn't, and I couldn't dance because I was so scared about how everyone was viewing me. I didn't give, I didn't care. I, I didn't, I wasn't allowing myself to just be. Because, mm. like in a room by yourself, even when you're in L, even when you're in elementary school and stuff like that, I'm guessing you were able to speak fluently in a room by yourself. Uh, yeah, yeah, and a room like with my parents. A lot of the times, my sister, people who I'm like super hyper comfortable with, it's fine. I usually notice it flares up, and. I, for the longest time, I, I just told myself, oh, it's completely random. I don't know when it flares up. I don't know why it's it's caused. I've come to my senses. I've realized it is some sort of anxiety. I don't feel anxious. And I'm a very... Uh... <laughs> are, are you seeing this? <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing that. What is that? What the heck's going on? All right. I don't know. Yeah, some, some like, fireworks just went off around my head. Zoom is so weird. All right. No, uh, I don't ever feel anxious, and I'm actually a very, like, adrenaline-seeking guy, and so I like to jump out of planes and scuba dive and black diamond ski and all this stuff. Uh, so I would almost take pride in the fact that, oh, I'm not anxious, I'm not scared, you know? 
but it's not like it's not I don't feel scared but it is something because I notice when I talk to older men that I respect like a like a cop the stutter's off the rails like I I, I look so guilty oh my gosh <laughs> I, I have to start out the, the combo with hey I have a speech impediment this is just normal and they're like oh okay all right no but uh yeah you know I, I think mine's linked to the sexual dysfunction too because I I had a I don't know what was the uh, root of your sexual dysfunction but I realized actually through therapy which is kind of crazy um that i had some sort of sexual encounter some sort of i don't know what you'd want to call it abuse whatever when i was real young so when i was young uh i didn't stutter until i was like maybe four or five and through the therapy i kind of was able to remember because i completely blocked it out because i think your brain does a pretty good job at being able to block Mm. the trauma out but i remembered i'm like oh damn you know like my babysitter and I played that game. It's like, oh, oh my God, you know? Mm. And, uh, and so I realized I was like a sexual deviant. Like I was like wanting to have sex way before puberty. Like I was like obsessed, like in the third grade, it was like, I want to have sex, like, which shouldn't, which isn't normal. And I think I got hard for the first time when I was like five, which I don't, I don't even think that's, I don't even know if that's possible. I don't even know. But, uh, so I put all my self-worth in who I would have sex with. And so in high school, you know, uh, I had a girlfriend who really indulged in that, you know, and I felt so cool. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm the man. Cause, because, you know, I have sex all the time and I put all my self-worth into that. And, uh, I've always had a, a foundation of Christ. And so there was always this little bit of like blame, shame, and guilt when it came to having sex. Cause I was like, Hey, I'm supposed to be, you know, married. I'm not supposed to have sex out of wide lock, all this, but I was just obsessed. And so I felt really cool when I was having sex. I felt not so cool when that potential was not there. And, mm. uh, and I don't know how the stuttering comes into that, but I don't know. It's like, I think, I think it's the stutter was started because of that experience in the beginning. I don't know why, but that's my theory. That's That's my theory. theory. I don't don't know know what what the psychology is there, but my God, you know, um, I think also pornography plays a big role in my speech as well. Cause you know, I, I was, uh, I moved a lot, right? And so in the third grade, I moved to a new school. I went from a private school that had 80 kids in it total, K through eighth grade. So there was only like 10 kids in each grade. You knew everybody in the school. It was a small school. I moved then to the biggest elementary school in the entire state that had like 4,000 kids. And so I rode a school bus the the first day First day on the bus, some kid shows me porn on his iPhone and writes me down a link and goes, hey, go look this up. And I was just like, what the hell? And I, again, I became obsessed. Like, I was just like, so intrigued. I didn't even know what masturbation was, but I would watch it every day as a kid because I was like, what is this? Like, this is crazy. Mm. Uh, And I noticed when I, so I, I was addicted for a long time. I've been off of it for uh, I'm not even counting, but over a year now feels amazing. And I noticed my speech has improved so much this year, like, like exponentially when I don't participate in that. Yeah. And I'm sure that's a common theme between a lot of people who have a stutter. It is a little bit of like a shameful act. It is a little bit of, I notice when I do it, lack of eye contact. I feel a little bit more like they know, I don't know. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But yeah, that's just what I've noticed. I don't know, man. That's a that's a great take because there is definitely truth to that. As for me and the people and the people who stutter that I've talked to and that I've and that I've and that I've worked with too, it's it's not just porn. Porn is something that really fucks up the. I, I don't know if it's the dopamine levels or. 
exactly what it does, but all yeah. types of tech, all types of technology. Like if uh, just talking from my experience, if if I go on TikTok right now, it's not on my phone. It's never gonna be on my phone Good. again. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's 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 horrible. <laughs> Tell me about it's it. So addictive. It's chi- it's Chinese propaganda. It's terrible. <laughs> they they track <laughs> everything on your phone. Don't get TikTok. <laughs> Oh my god, I, I, I go on a rant about all the social medias, man. I don't have any on 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 my phone. My phone's just a brick. It's just a boring brick. So sorry. Um But if if I were to go on TikTok right now and scroll for three hours and then I go and try to talk to a cop, dude, like <laughs> Good luck. Looking guilty. <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll be in a high sig. I'll be in a high sig in a high sig in a high security prison in like twenty minutes. I'll be add. I'll be like ad- I don't know what you did, but you're hiding <laughs> yeah. something, buddy. No, yeah. I'll be add add admitting to like the worst shit because I feel scared. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but yeah, man. It's like technology, porn, all of that. If if I were to watch it and then go to try to talk to someone versus reading a book for an hour or going for a run, a run's a, not the best analogy because when I'm like out of breath, I do stutter more. But um, yeah, versus like meditating or working on something, doing those types of things and then and then and then and then talking to someone complete 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 completely different one thing that i wrote down that i wanted to ask you is are you happy with the way that you're able the way you're expressing yourself Hmm. am i happy with the way i'm expressing myself i would say yes I say yes. I haven't always and, been. E- even last month, I wasn't. But this month, I am. And what changed? Is it just the severity of the star of the stu- of the stuttering fluctuation has been in your favor this time, or is it something else? It's mindset. It's a hundred percent just how I view myself, my own self esteem. Hmm. I and, I struggle yeah. I struggle with viewing myself in, in a kind light. I don't know wh- why that is. It's very self-destructive. It's not great, but uh, it's just my reality for some reason. But the beautiful part about it is I can choose to think differently. And I've noticed that as kind of lame as it sounds, it's kind of a little gay. But when you look in the mirror and you go, you know, you're a great guy. It works for me. I don't know why. At first, it feels so weird. feels kind of lame. But, uh, you know, the affirmative action stuff, speaking life over yourself as opposed to death, it really helps. I, I got on a shirt right now called uh, Your Words Matter. And it's so true because I think, I mean, the Bible tells us that life or death is in the tongue. And I really believe this life? to be the Sorry. case. Could you say that again? Life or death? Is in the tongue. And so mm. you can either, when whenever you talk to somebody else or even yourself, you're speaking life over them or you're speaking death over them, depending on your tone, the words. It can be a, a number of different aspects. aspects. But I notice if I don't, if I am, if, if I'm not conscious about that, I'll look at a hair and I'll just go, you i'll just like totally treat myself terribly worse than Mm. anybody else i'll i'll like actually say to myself fuck you like like you you suck you can't talk all this stuff i have to really reel it in and go no 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 no. you rock you know um it's it feels so stupid (laughs) to say that i don't know why for me it just is is kind of tough to be like you know, you're worthy. You speak fluently. All that, all that stuff. But yeah, it 
it, 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 it helps me out a lot. And I notice um, when you speak life over other people too, it, 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 it helps me out a lot. Just yeah. putting out positive vibrations, man. <laughs> <laughs> that shit does not sound weird to me at, okay. at all, man, as I've done. A lot more embarrassing shit than that. A lot more embarrassing <laughs> like shit. Like what? Than that. Well, like some of the shit that I'd say say to say to myself. So like, I had this friend who told me about this Tony this Tony Robbins exercise that he used to do. He paid for like a five grand a five grand program by Tony Robbins, and it was called incantations, and what you do is like you get yourself fucking hyped up so you're you're standing up you put on head you put on headphones you play your favorite song and you're like you dance you just go you get so hyped up and then you just repeat out loud like yelling to yourself the most the most extreme possible thing that you can want so like for for me or it, it, for a long time it was that every single girl wants me that's that, <laughs> yeah. that I, I i would put i would put on these headphones and i'd start moving like every single fucking girl wants me. every single and i would do that for like five minutes and i kid you not dude like i i, I didn't just do that but when I did do when I did do that and I'd walk on the streets, I felt like the girls were looking at me more. And I felt like I was pay like I was pay like I was pay like I was picking it up more. And it truly, truly felt like it was true. And one of the best things that was in my in what was in my incantations when I wanted to be more when I wanted to be more do when I wanted to be more dominant in in bed and and stuff. I would say that every single girl wants to be led by me. Every single girl fully trusts me, and like mm. variations of that of like every single girl's craving to be led by me. Like the most extreme <laughs> shit. And yeah. then and then I'd go to bed and completely rock it like completely dip into this state where i'm like i feel so sure of myself like that that shit works man that shit it works. totally works i didn't even know so i went to a tony robbins like talk one time he's great he he's like he's been on top of the game for like decades dude this guy is great but uh i didn't learn that but i actually do that without even knowing that that was a thing that people do I do put on my headphones and I dance like a madman and I'll just say, Oh, I'm so happy. I'm filled with joy. I am just, uh, have overwhelming amount of peace. This is awesome. I love my life, all that. And I, I do that quite a bit. I didn't even contribute it to, I just do it for like fun. Cause it's kind of fun, but yeah, yeah. man, that's, that, that, that's, that's awesome. And as, <laughs> it's so funny that, you say the part about you know all girls will want me because i have this all borderline delusional mindset i'm like i can get any girl i want i don't know why <laughs> i have that i've always had that i'm like yeah like like i'm a catch like any girl would want me because my life rocks uh <laughs> and it's true like it, it when you say that <laughs> look it's not true with every girl not every girl wants me but i convince myself I'm like, yeah, if I wanted to have sex, which I don't because of Jesus, you know, if I wanted to have a girlfriend, which I don't, you know, yeah. I could. <laughs> yeah. I feel the yeah. exact same way, man. Like, I don't believe, but uh, I, I also have the exact same thought of like, I, I, I am such a rare person that I feel like any girl doesn't matter if she's completely famous doesn't matter if she dated lee and ordered dicaprio it doesn't matter if like whoever it is if we're in a room one one-on-one -on -one for 
20 minutes, she's she's going to want to be with me. Like I yeah. I have I have that thought. I have that thought too. We fly in rare air, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're eagles. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Nice. Um to go back a little bit to actually no. Actually no. I I, I don't want to make this just about stuttering because stuttering is just like it's just a byproduct it's just a byproduct of like i i don't believe any progress in speech or any progress in stuttering is done by trying to focus on it agreed the, it's all by improving your life it's all by building your self-esteem and building confidence and feeling worthy about yourself and reducing the fear of what other people think about you i Absolutely. believe that that's everything so to bring it to a little bit of a different talk to bring it a little bit of a different topic we've heard a little bit about your past but what are what are you most excited about in your life right now like future or uh kind of present uh whatever comes to mind well, I will say what came to mind first is I'm very excited about a road trip that I'm taking that I already took in January, but I'm doing it again in November at the beginning of November. So like in two weeks where I'm going to hop in my car and I'm going to drive across the entire country and go to national parks and camp out and go skiing and just just take off like for a month and a half and go have some fun, go on a grand adventure, the great adventure. Uh Everybody calls me crazy because I live in South Florida and to drive all the way across the state, it's like 3000 miles. It's like, it's going to take me about a week to get across, but man, I'm so psyched. I, uh, I've got f friends that live in just about every state. And so I don't even need a hotel. I'm just going to drive and stop off at friends, house, families and, uh, just go hang out and I'm super psyched. I feel so blessed that I, I have that time freedom that I work for myself and I'm able to work on the road. I mean, I realized how rare that is and how I won't always have this because when you have a, a wife and kids and that type of responsibility to remain stable in one place becomes increasingly important. So I am super psyched about that. Hell yeah, man. I had a question come to mind. There may not be an answer for it, but what are you see what are you secretly hoping for to gain or to get from this trip? I actually know exactly what it is. Mm. I I have been thinking about it for a long time. I think this trip, uh by the time I'm over with it, I will have obliterated all lenses of lack of poverty i think my mm. abundance mindset will peak and this will be the start of a really great rest of my life i think that uh 2024 is the year i make 250 grand i think that 2024 is the year where i plant the seeds to possibly find a bride uh, I really want kids. I'm like obsessed with having as many kids as I can. So, uh, you know, the closer I get to that excites me. And each year that, that goes by, I get closer, you know? So yeah, man. Uh, what's the opposite of abundance? I don't even know. Lacking, um, Scar scarcity. scarcity, scarcity, my scarcity mindset will be obliterated through this trip. What about the trip? is going to obliterate that. So I'm actually, uh, I'm on a little bit of a mission. So I'm going to San Diego. I have been doing this leadership course through this program called Clemmer. And uh, it was founded by this guy, Brian Clemmer. So it's named after him. This is the third installment. So it's like a layered uh, leadership development course. Uh, it's kind of like TLT, but for adults, like on extreme mode. And the 
week-long course in San Diego that is kind of the reason why I'm going on this trip, but I could fly there. I'm just choosing to drive and make it into a month as opposed to a week. Uh, this trip is all, or this class is all about that abundance mindset and that um, obliterating the scarcity glasses. So the way that they kind of phrase it is we look through life uh, with layers and layers of like a lens or a filter. And so every experience that we've ever had puts a filter on us that we accept. And it can even be so subconscious that we don't even know it's there. Uh, And I definitely, I mean, I think the results of your life reflect the lenses that you have on. And so if you're only making a certain amount of money a year, uh, that's the result of how much you think you're worth. That's kind of the the idea. And that goes for anything. If you feel like you can never get married or no girl will ever love you, it probably roots back to you went after a girl once, she denied you, and you made that mean, oh, I'm not worthy. I'm not... I'm not able to ever get a girl. No girl will love me. Now, we have to consciously, like you said, we have to reverse that, and we have to take that filter off, and we have to tell ourselves that's not true. That the truth of it is that one girl denied me at that one time. That's the truth. We made it mean something completely else. Mm. But, But the truth is, that's not who we are at all. And so let's say your past experience where, you know, you buzz quick or can't get hard. You can make that mean for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just am bad at sex. No girl will want the piss. My speech, uh, you know, I'm short. You know, I don't make that much money. No girl wants me. You can make that mean all from one time that you tried to have sex and couldn't get, 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 get hard. Or you could just realize the facts are that one time didn't get hard. We move on. Next time, I'm going to kill it. You know what I mean? Yeah. 100%, man. 100%. And yeah, I think that's that's so huge. From what I've learned about that is like it, 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 it makes sense why we remember those times that we didn't get what what we want or we busted quickly or the girl didn't 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 like us back every time i every time i say that (laughs) it makes you laugh i know the the (laughs) phrase busted quickly cracks me up i don't know why there's no better way to say it i mean that's like the most pg way to say it but it's funny (laughs) yeah (laughs) um it's it it's like the times that I'll I'll just talk for I'll I'll just speak for star for stuttering and speaking and speaking fluently. From what I've learned is like when people stutter, especially when they're younger, in like a group setting, it was very traumatizing, and there was a a lot of. A, a lot of emotional re- response with that and Absolutely. with the emotional response we that's what we remember is that we remember that memory because it's, con- it's connected to that strong emotional response but because that happened a lot or maybe not a lot may, maybe just maybe just maybe just happened that one time every time we speak fluently it's it's not like Whoa! There's a fluent speech. We're like we, we we don't give ourselves that same emotional response. So the the things that we remember is the fucking stutters, totally. and then and then even though we only stuttered one one fifth one fifth one fifth one fiftieth of our words, that is like such a big thing in our mind. Of I, I hope I don't do that again. And totally. A big, a big, a big thing that I had to do for myself is to learn, not, it, it was to, it was to learn to pride myself and like consciously, this is a Tony Robbins thing too, to con, to consciously c- 
condition myself to feel good when I just said the word, not if I stuttered, not if I was fluent, just said the word I wanted to say. As, as long as I said the shit I want to say, I condition myself to feel good. And I condition myself to remove the huge emotional response from the stutter. So that's not like a, a huge thing to me. But what makes me feel good and what I remember is the, is the times that I stepped up and I faced that fear. And for you, it's, 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 it's that time where you were 16 and you got on, you got on stage and you, you talked with everyone and you, 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 you were that person on stage. And if we can like, remember that re re remember how that made us feel and realizing it's not because I spoke fluently. It's not because I didn't stutter. It's because I showed up for myself. Yes, yes absolutely. That, that, that's everything. Hundred, yes, a hundred percent. Agreed. Man. And I mean, dude, I used to when so up until twenty-two years old. So I'm twenty-four now. I would beat myself, like like physically punch myself in the leg. Mm. I would. Uh, I would say I can't speak every time that, that, that I'd sit down there. I go, I, I can't speak. I, can speak. I would have these suicidal thoughts. I'd really, I would come home from school every day going, Ma, Dad, I wish I was a mute. The fact mm-hmm. that I said, Hunter, I hate myself, all this stuff, stuff, stuff. And I would connect that negative emotion every time I would. And people wouldn't even notice. That was the crazy part because it was so small at times. At times it was very bad, but. They wouldn't even really notice, especially if they hung out with me for months and months and months, like, you know, that their uh, awareness of it goes away for the most part. But I would notice every word and that mindset shift that you just described changed it all where I, instead of putting the value in when I screw up, put the value in when I say it and they understand. Mm. Even if I stuttered my way through, if they understand, ah, uh, that, that feels so good because I stutter the most on my name. It's the worst. So when I introduce myself, the first impression, everything is Danny. And then they go, what? Sometimes they go, Kenny? Sometimes they go, your your name's Danny? I'm like, no. And <laughs> But when I say it and they, even if I stutter and they go, Danny? I go, yes, yes, that's my name. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, that, that changed it all. Yeah. Uh, and you're definitely not alone with that of your name being the hard thing. Like it's, it's, it's crazy. Those, those unexchangeable words, like your name or the place you went to school or the place you grew up or the place where you're going to go on the road trip and the person right. that works there, their name, like the, the words you can't change out. Or, or the words it's like you get extra pressure and also the the yes. words that you should know that you should be able to speak like that like your name it's like that extra pressure is just like it fucks with you um a hundred percent i don't know what yeah. the heck that is and i, I like that phrase on exchangeable because i find myself all the time i'm always like a sentence two three four ahead and so whenever a word comes up that i know i'm gonna you know, cut her on. I pivot and find a new word to place in there. Mm. And that usually helps, you know, because it's more when I'm spontaneously talking that it's fine. It's, it's when I plan it out so much, which I just naturally do. That's when I overthink it and it it just comes out wrong or Mm. not wrong. You know, it just comes out a little, a little messy. Yeah. I have an inch, an interesting take on what you just said there. Um, I I have a lot of my own thoughts with it, but none of them quite as direct and precise and truthful as um, this one at this one SLP who has her own clinic. I, I don't know where it is. Oh, it's in Toronto, I think. It might be in the states. So I think it's in Toronto. Uh, her name's Viv. Her name's Vivian Sis. Vivian Sis. Vivian Siskin. 
and she says to quote successful s- successful so su- successful suppression of the stutter is what maintains and perpetuates it su- su- successful suppression of the stutter is what maintains and perpetuates it so this mm. means every time that you hide from your stutter every time you do any type of avoidant ten any time you do type any type of avoidant ten avoidant tendency like you like you swap words you're training yourself to to grow the fear to stutter and the Damn. more <laughs> And the and the more that you fear the stutter, we all we all know the 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 more that it comes up. And one thing, um, yeah, that I I think that's just like a such a true statement because for me and for the people that I've worked with too, is like once you're able to face the stutter head on like it's right here and you're like i know i'm gonna stutter i'm not gonna swap you i'm gonna look at you i'm gonna feel you completely and you go and you hit that stutter with an open fucking heart and you stay open and you stay wide and you don't try to swap it and you don't try to exchange it you completely tell a different story to your brain of i can handle this there's nothing Mm. i cannot handle you can place me in any situation i I can talk to a cop i can talk to that i can talk to that i can i can stutter a lot but i know that i'll be able to handle myself because i don't have to play these mental acrobatics of trying to swap swap words out and stuff like that. So, I'm 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 not I'm not trying to change what you're doing and what brought you here, but I thought I'd share that point of view too. No, I I appreciate all that. We will uh, we will bring this to a wrap here, man. Danny, it was great to Chase. meet you, man. And like I said at the beginning, the goal of this wasn't to so much share any ideas or what's what's right and what's what's wrong, and how it should be. I feel like I might have done that and I take back what I said. Like we all live our own lives. Fuck it. It doesn't matter. Just follow what you think is true. Um, the goal of this is just like of this podcast is just authentic, authentic communication. I feel a lot of people are deprived of that because they have the walls up. But within an hour of getting to know you, we talked about stuttering. We talked about bossing quickly. We talked about screaming with fucking music on saying every girl <laughs> wants me. Like stuff that usually would take years to, to talk about. So I'm Yeah, absolutely, I'm, man. I'm 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 glad we, we got to uh be open and vul- and vul- and vulnerable for this last hour, man. Me too. You know, it's it's always it's always fun to be honest and true to yourself. Be open, transparent. I call it hot, honest, open, transparent. We were real hot today, Chase. I'm I I'm I'm happy with this. I I hope the audience got some value and maybe some inspiration. And uh, it was a great show. If I'm ever in Sweden, I'll hit you up. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be here for long. I won't be here for long. Oh yeah, are you hoving? Yeah, well, like I, I don't live here. I, I just, I just came here for a month. I'm like traveling uh-huh. around Europe right now. Nice. All right. So, where's home? Home is Van is Vancouver, Canada. Oh, Canadian. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, if you're ever here in South Florida, hit me up, and I'll, I'll show you a good time. We'll go to the beach. Nice. <laughs> We can do in we we can do incantations at the same time, two together. Yeah. We can scream. Every girl wants us. 
<laughs> yeah, then we can hit the town and just just go. I don't want these chicks. <laughs> yeah, we we don't talk to any of them, but we 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 just we just think it the whole time. Yeah, they, they all want us, but you know, we're too high value. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these girls out here, they are, are, oh my, oh my gosh, gosh these, dude. South Florida South chicks, Florida chicks. They're dressing like they're prostitutes, dressing like all prostitutes, of them. It's crazy, it's crazy. These, girls. these girls. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not a place to find a bride. Let's just say that. Mm. Go somewhere up in Vancouver to find a bride. A nice cold bitch. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, this is a horrible way to end the show. We we wrapped it up so well, and then we're going down the down slope. You, you'll probably cut this, but hey. Hey, no, are you a fan of hockey? That's getting added in for sure. Yeah, man. Hockey's my shit. Dude, me too. It's my favorite sport. Uh, my cousin, Alex Debrinkit, he played for the Ottawa Senators last year. Now he's on the Detroit Red Wings. He's a great guy. He's He's actually number one in the NHL right now for points. Kind of sick. Oh wow! Yeah, he he is good. So, you know, if 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 you want to go to a game, dude, I'm 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 psyched. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if somehow we uh, we make a way there to D de- to Detroit, we'll uh, we'll go to a game, man. Yeah, man, I can get you in for free. So hey, there we go. Who's your team? Vancouver Canucks. But nice. I haven't followed hockey that much. The like I I played for the first like ten years of my life, and I when 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 I would play vi- when I would play video games, I was playing nonstop NHL. But nice. after I stopped playing games, I kind of stopped watching hockey too. But it's it's still the sport that I like the most. Same, yeah. I I don't watch any sports. I only watch his games. To be honest, I I don't keep up with too much i used to be so addicted to video games too and then i kissed a girl once and i was like that's way better (laughs) (laughs) screw this Uh, xbox be gone (laughs) putting all my attention into women now no yeah (laughs) no i feel i i feel a lot of truth in that too but i loved video games so much that i i picked them over women quite a bit of times oh yeah yeah. Oh, dude, yeah, I was obsessed. We, we we didn't even talk about the fact that I was uh, once married and now divorced. <laughs> Were you? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah, there's a lot that we didn't get into. If you want to do part two, we, we, we can do part two. Yeah, let's do part two. Let's do part two. Cool. All right, All right man. man. Well, have a great rest of your day. Enjoy the cold tea that you have left over. And uh, I'll, she gone. I'll- she gone. <laughs> All right, I'll see you for part two, Danny. All right, sweet man. Peace out.